Michael Darcy is going to talk about how we can communicate with our exes. And I think it's fair to say, Jill, that the reason we get divorced or separated is because the other person does irritate us. And if you have kids, you have to keep communicating, though. That's the difference. It astounds me, and you say people still do this, but it, it astounds me that if you're in a, a, if you've separated or divorced, mm. that one parent would actually put the other parent down to the children. Mm. I cannot believe that happens, but you say it does. It happens a lot. What What should your response be if you're the other parent who's hearing how awful you are mm. from your child? Uh, let's start at the extreme, and that is when they're just totally toxic and they're trying to poison as much as they can. Okay. And the thing is, is that you never buy into that. Okay, so you have to remain in that beautiful calm space. And, yeah, exactly, <laughs> biting your tongue. And even though you want to lash out or that you want to justify it or defend it, because it's just blatantly a lie, mm. none of that is going to help your children. What if it's true? Yeah. That you are awful. Well, well <laughs> that's a whole different topic. <laughs> but assuming that they're being very vindictive. How, what do you say to your child about it? Yeah, look, it's, it's one of those things where a lot more of, of how you say something is going to come through very carefully. So I would say you're not there to try and defend it. Just let it go. Ask your child, how does that make you feel? Talk to your children about that. Mm -hmm. But I'd say remember this line. You know, resentment is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. <laughs> and the reality is, is that too many of these people that are just toxic about the exes are actually only poisoning themselves and yes. they don't realise it. So they're poisoning themselves and unfortunately they're poisoning the children. So if your ex has been really poisonous, then you remain you as being a great example to a child on how to handle that. So what you're saying is you shouldn't then say, well, you think I'm bad, you should see what he's like Absolutely. or she's like. So don't poison back, obviously. No. Should you approach the other person in this instance and say, can you please not speak ill of me? To you can try that. Um, certainly, that's one of the tactics that you can try. But I'm not going to say that you're going to have great success because they see the world differently than you. They realise you, you know, that everything has changed since you've been married or together. And now that you're separated, their whole perspective of life has changed. And sometimes we don't realise how much that has changed because we think, oh, we know them, you know. But actually you get to know them a lot if you'll listen once you've separated. But your job is not to teach them life lessons anymore. Your job is to teach your children how to handle what's going on, not your ex. No, I understand that, but if they're trying to poison your children against mm. you, Surely you have to take some kind of action. Um, you, certainly you could try and say, listen, please don't say this in front of the kids or please don't say this to the children. That's not fair, not right. But at the end of the day, to them it is. To them, that is their truth. That is the they, story that they, they want to doing, sing. They don't think they're doing anything Absolutely. wrong. Absolutely. So the idea is you teach the children. And a really good antidote if they're being really toxic is hurting people hurt other people. So if your ex is particularly toxic, it's because they're really hurting. So you say that to your kids? Absolutely. Explain it. It leaves the doorway open for compassion because the children go, oh, mum or dad is hurting. That's why they're saying what they're saying. About that, but it doesn't justify it. It doesn't defend it. It takes the focus off what's been said mm. and it puts it on to, how do I relate to the children in this? What, if you, if, hopefully you don't have that situation. So say you're just in... A normal separated situation mm. where you have to somehow communicate. What are the sort of whys, where's and how's to communicate with your ex? So certainly look at your tone. You know, it's not what you say, it's how, how you say, say it. it. And my mother used to say that to me all the time and it's a really golden rule. You know, it is how you say it. Be careful of the medium you use. So often we'll send off an email or we'll flick off a text and they can be really misunderstood. Yes. They are a terrible form of communication when you've got sensitive information. Mm. So try face-to-face. -face. And if you're going to try face-to-face -face and things are heated, do it public. Go to a public place where people are more likely to behave mm. or if not, you can escape into the mess. Okay, so, right. so try that. So so, in a cafe or something. Yeah, absolutely. Where is really important and when. So don't do it at handover time. Your children are not there um, to hear parents arguing. They're there to actually have a conversation of hi, hello, mm. goodbye, farewell. That's what the handovers are for. Parents are there to do the same. They're not there to discuss communicating. Book a time, make it happen then. But do it separately yeah. from, the, from the children. What happens if you still feel as one of the parties in this relationship, that the ex is not getting it. 
they probably won't. And so give up <laughs> trying to get them to get it and you look at how you are responding to that and how your children are and put your focus into that. Because if they're not going to get it, they're not going to get it and you make your life unhappy trying to get them to get it. And your job is not there to try and get them to understand their life lessons. Your job is to help your children. So I often say billboards work. Have a one-sided conversation. Mm. Say what you need to say, say it nicely, and leave it with them. We know billboards work. What, when you're trying to talk to your ex about communicating, can you at the same time ha have that as a life lesson for your children? Yes. So should you keep them involved in the whole process? I mean, you're saying don't talk in front of your children. How mm. should you keep the children involved in this? You know, what should you tell them about your separated life? I think the whole communication thing is appropriate for age, and at life experiences and those things we need to take in on, on account when we're talking with children. But in terms of relating with your ex, that's not a conversation that has to come up unless it's affecting the children, mm. in which case you give them the examples on how to handle that. And put it into their playground, school playground examples. So they're making, they've probably gone through friendship changes and bust ups already, and keep it that light, keep it that easy. Because to them, they only want a little bit on how to get through. They don't really want to know all the adult nitty and gritty. No, not all the details. How much, how important do you think or how effective is it to be the, the big one and just let them at, at you and just go, yes, I'm sorry, and be the one who's always apologising and always being the sort of peacemaker? Is that a good strategy? I think that there's a lot of wisdom in it. And I think often we can gain that great peace because of what we carry internally, not because we're putting boundaries externally saying you shouldn't talk to me like that, you know, and those sorts of things. Mm. So what we can do is we can say, oh, look, it's their story. Okay, and so that's an all right thing to, because if you are always, I suppose, the peacemaker and always the one apologising, does that make you look weak to your children? Well, I don't necessarily think you always have to apologise, but you can just say, they can believe what they want to believe, they can say what they want to say, and children, we're going forward, we're going to be doing this in a constructive way. Because sometimes when you apologise, you do put yourself on the back foot all the time. So the boundaries are a really big issue. So much to think about, yes. and it's all in your book, and of course um, you also have the Complex Family Foundation, and people can find all the information there on our website. Jill, great to have you on the show, thank you very thank much you. for doing the series.